White Noise Metal with that BS dude, Brian Shields. White Noise Metal! Nineteen ninety one's release of Blind by Corrosion of Conformity marked an important turning point in the history of heavy metal, and in many ways I think presaged the metalcore revolution of this century. Welcome to White Noise Metal. I'm that BS dude Brian Shields now back here in San Francisco after a trip to North Carolina to witness some heavy metal history. In March of 2009, two of the men who recorded the Blind album, singer Carl Agell and drummer Reed Mullen, hooked up with an all-star band, including Scott Little, Jason Browning, and Jerry Barrett, to perform Blind. I traveled to Wilmington and to Raleigh, North Carolina, to document this show and to talk to Carl Agell about some of the thoughts and philosophies behind Blind. And over the next hour or so, we'll hear what he had to say and listen to quite a bit of the performance. I was born in Before this record, COC was more or less a straight-up hardcore band. Blind brought in some new personnel, a new bass player, Phil Swisher, replacing Mike Dean, and Carla Gell, a new singer who was a longtime fan of COC. Together, they took the power and aggression of heavy metal and married it with the energy and left-leaning politics of punk. <laughs> Bill and I uh, really were kindred spirits when we first came to this thing because they were all Black Flag acolytes and you know minor, you know the whole DC hardcore scene and Void and minor, you know all that stuff. They came out of that and you know they were embracing all the new exciting sounds. You know obviously Motorhead, Metallica, Slayer, you know Venom, you know old Exodus, shit like that. That was just like cutting edge. Like holy shit, what's coming out of the Bay Area? what's coming out of England, what's coming, you know, all these things. And, you know, the whole new wave of British heavy metal thing that even Metallica had latched onto. But th there was that whole thing that was, you, and I, I was on the same parallel wave before I was in the band where I had long hair as a hardcore punk guy way before 1985, you know, and I was like, you know, and the, the whole tribalism began to break down where it wasn't just a haircut versus a haircut. You know, it became more about the excitement of the music. And to me, it was this raw, raw power of, of heavy metal combined with just the sheer aggression and angst that was built into the hardcore scene. And it was this beautiful pairing that somehow worked. Years after first seeing COC perform live, Carl saw an ad from the band looking for a singer, the ad in the Village Voice. Yeah. 
with him and got the gig and the one thing you know Phil had written this song bringing his real he had written the song Buried years before and it was on a demo and part of my audition was to write vocal melodies and lyrics for Buried and two other songs but the Buried is the one that hit me the other ones are more of the traditional hardcore kind of fast vibe and they were awesome but Buried just hit a note and I was going through a lot of personal stuff at that time pretty bad and I've been listening over and over and over again to that. And I woke up, and this is, I swear to this is true, that I woke up and just had those lyrics and that vocal melody in my head. Like, it just came to me, and it just made so much sense. And I came down and auditioned, and they, they, I was like, well, let's try the song. And I just whipped out what I had, you know? Whipped it out. No, and uh, you could just see the smiles on their faces. And, like, we, it, we plugged in right away. You know, and it worked out, you know, for well, for a short time. For a short time. You were lucky friends, you can be dead. Now you live the with a bottom, the rest upon your mind. You were lying to yourself, well afraid of what you find. Stay with a vengeance 